So we're here we have a model of the head and neck. I think inside the head you can see the skull. And in the neck you can see the seven cervical vertebrae. But we can see the skull much more clearly if we take away these soft tissues and just leave the bone of the skull. And that's what we see on this model here. So here we're looking at the skull. And firstly we notice that we have facial bones at the front. And as we turn the skull around we can see that these cranial bones are enclosing the cranial cavity. And the cranial cavity, of course, contains the brain in life. And we can open the top of this skull and we can see the cranial cavity from the inside. So this is the top part of the cranial cavity. And here we see the markings inside the top part of the cranial cavity. It looks a bit like a river system. And these indentations in life contain the meningeal arteries. And the top part of the brain would sit in this top part of the cranial cavity. And then we can see the rest of the cranial cavity here. We notice the large hole in the base of the skull, the foramen magnum, where the medulla oblongata gives rise to the spinal cord. So in life, the spinal cord is sitting here, immediately below the foramen magnum, where it's communicating with the brain inside the cranial cavity. And looking into the bottom part of the cranial cavity, we notice that there are anterior fossa, middle fossa and posterior fossa. And in life, the frontal lobes of the brain will sit in the frontal fossa, the temporal lobes of the brain will sit in the middle fossa, and the cerebellum will sit in the posterior fossa. We notice the orbit, the orbital cavity, where of course the eyes are located. And we also notice the nasal cavities. But we can see the bones of the skull more clearly on this coloured model. Again, we notice the facial bones and the cranial bones and this is nicely colour coded so we can see the individual bones. So the lower jaw in white is the mandible. The upper jaw in orange and the area of the face round here, this is the maxilla. In brown here we have the nasal bones. The nose of course would extend further in life, but this part, the front of the nose, would be cartilaginous. It would be made of cartilage. In purple we have the zygomatic bones. One here and one here. The zygomatic bones.
And then here I think we can probably see the smallest bone in the skull, smallest facial bone. That's the lacrimal bone. And in life, the lacrimal sac sits just in here, in this small fossa here. And what the lacrimal sac does is it collects the tears and passes them into the nasal cavity. Now behind, we have the yellow bone here in the orbit, behind the lacrimal bone, and that is the ethmoid bone. At the front of the cranial cavity, we have the large frontal bone. At the side in brown, we have the temporal bone. In green, on the sides, we have the parietal bones and at the back we have the occipital bone and you will have noticed that the names of these bones in the cranial cavity have the same names as the underlying lobes of the brain frontal, parietal, temporal occipital. And I think just before we open the cranial cavity we'll look at the joins between the bones. So here we have a line between the frontal bone and the parietal bone. And these lines are fixed fibrous joints between the bones and they're called the suture lines. And the join between the frontal bones, or the frontal bone, and the parietal bones, this suture line here is called the coronal suture. So the coronal suture is between the frontal and the parietal bones. Here we can see the suture line between the two parietal bones. This suture line along here. And that's called the sagittal suture. So the sagittal suture is the joint between the two parietal bones. On the side, we have the suture line between the temporal bone and the parietal bone. And this suture line is called the squamous suture between the parietal and the temporal bones. And at the back, we have a suture line between the parietal and the occipital bone. And the suture line between the parietal and the occipital bone is called the lambdoid suture. So the lambdoid suture is the joint between the parietal and the occipital bones. Then it's very interesting, of course, to open the cranial cavity and see the individual bones inside here. First of all, in the top part of the skull, we see the occipital in blue, the parietal in green, and the frontal bone in light brown. And looking inside, We actually see that there's a red bone here, 
And that red bone is the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone. And that's actually connecting quite a few of the bones of the skull together, this sphenoid bone. In yellow we can actually see part of the ethmoid bone that we noticed inside the orbital cavity before. In green we notice the parietal bones. Frontal bone, light brown. Occipital bone, light blue. And of course the temporal bones in the darker brown. The bones of the cranial cavity surrounding the brain. And I think the last thing I'll show you on this model is the dentition, the teeth. 32 teeth in a healthy adult. 16 on the top, 16 on the bottom. And starting in the middle, we notice that there's two incisors. Then this one that sticks down a bit further is called the canine or the cuspoid tooth. two premolars and three molars, one, two, three. And of course it's the same on the bottom, this arrangement of two incisors, one cuspoid, two premolars and three molars. And on this side of the model we see that part of the mandible has been removed to show us the roots of the teeth. And here is an abnormality. This third molar has failed to erupt properly and that has actually become somewhat impacted. We sometimes call these impacted wisdom teeth. They might need to be removed if they become painful, but otherwise they can usually be left in situ. So the bones of the skull, facial bones, cranial bones.